video we will be talking about epilepsy. So epilepsy is a neurological disorder characterized by recurrent unprovoked seizures. And these seizures are caused due to abnormal excessive electrical activity in the brain. And this leads to temporary disruption of the normal functioning of the brain. Now let's talk about the quick symptoms of epilepsy. It involves contraction and jerking of the muscles, loss of con consciousness sometimes, weakness, anxiety, confused speech, staring, etc. Now let's talk about and understand the biological basis of epilepsy. Now here is our brain and in the brain the neuronal circuitry is functioning in a specific pattern. All of the neurons are not firing at once and these neurons fire in a rhythmic fashion and this is important for information encoding, cognitive processing etc. And this periodicity is messed up in epilepsy and it leads to an uncontrolled unprovoked activity. Now all the neuronal activity in a neuronal circuit is maintained by two type of forces. One is inhibitory neuron mediated inhibitory drive and another is excitatory neuron mediated excitatory drive. So these components of the circuits are really important to maintain the excitatory versus inhibitory balance in a circuit. So this sort of mechanism allow the neuronal circuit to ensure the activity is not too low or not too high. Thereby, interplay between excitatory and inhibitory drive determines the overall brain function. And this particular function goes off in epilepsy. Moreover, when there is too high or too low activity of the brain, there are specific sensors which can sense this kind of activity change. And they can then coordinate with molecular network to enforce the activity back to a balanced level. This is known as homeostatic scaling mechanism in our nervous system and current research shows that homeostatic scaling mechanism fails uh, when epilepsy happens. Generally homeostatic scaling acts as a safety mechanism to prevent excitotoxicity but in epilepsy this mechanism goes wrong. Now when there is excitatory overdrive or there is a less inhibitory drive ultimate result is uncontrolled unchecked activity which lead to epileptic seizures. Now here is something key. so from our discussion the key point that we should remember is that epilepsy is due to the imbalance of excite imbalance in excitatory inhibitory neurotransmission in the brain. Now so far we are taking a neurocentric view of epilepsy. There are glial involvement in epilepsy as well. For example, astrocytes, which are one type of glial cell forming the tripartite synapse. They can form synapse with the neurons. And when there is too much of glutamate, that is bad for the neuron. It leads to excitotoxicity and neuronal death. Astrocyte can actually come in to rescue. Astrocyte takes up excess glutamate from the synaptic cleft and thereby prevent the risk of excitotoxicity. And that is how people are thinking about the key roles of glial cells in these disease progression. Now when it comes to the clinical features, uh, the seizures evoked in epilepsy could be focal seizures. That means they are restricted to a specific brain area or they begin in a specific brain area. And there could be generalized seizures which involves the entire brain. Now in 60% of the cases, the seizure is basically focal seizure. In less than 40% cases, there is generalized seizure which is more devastating. Now we have to remember the different seizure types which are associated with epilepsy. So first let's dissect the generalized seizures. It can be subdivided into tonic-clonic seizures which means, I mean which is characterized by unconsciousness. Tonic means muscle stiffness phase and clonic means rhythmic jerking phase. So there are two phase of these tonic clonic seizures. Then there is myoclonic seizures which leads to a sudden brief jerk in the muscles. Then there is absence of seizures uh, or absent seizures. That means there is a brief episodes uh, basically seen in children. Okay, now let's talk about the focal seizures. Among focal seizures, there are simple partial seizures, which doesn't lead to a loss of consciousness. And there is complex partial seizures, which lead to an altered consciousness and awareness. 
Now let's talk about the key uh, features of epilepsy in a bit more details. So we looked at there is altered consciousness, altered mo abnormal movements, altered sensations and behavior. And all these things are leading to uncontrolled uh, brain activity and causing problem in patients. All these things can be diagnosed using electroencephalogram or EEG. This is how a normal EEG recording for an individual should look like. But if th this particular individual has epilepsy, then uh, this would be uh, diagnosed in the, uh, in the EEG traces. Now let's talk about the cause of epilepsy. So the etiology of epilepsy could be idiopathic. That means the clear cause is not known. There could be symptomatic or secondary cause. For example, some seizure or epilepsy which is associated with brain injury, let's say. There could be gene mutations which are leading to epilepsy. There could be also cryptogenic. That means it is presumed symptomatic, but the cause is still not identified. Now, there are several brain lesions like brain injury, hypoxic injury that can possibly lead to epilepsy. Another thing to, imp another thing to remember is the voltage-gated potassium channels and sodium channels are highly associated with the progression of epilepsy. Especially the voltage-gated potassium channel modulates inter-spike interval, modulates the action potential waveform, input resistance and overall modulate the excitatory inhibitory balance. So that is how potassium channels are super important in context of epilepsy development. And recent research has shown that voltage-gated potassium channel in the family of KCNQ, especially KCNQ 2 and 3 are associated with epilepsy. There are specific gene mutations which are associated in this channel are discovered which lead to epilepsy and there is an important notion about this discovery you might you might be wondering so what should i uh, what should i benefit after knowing these kind of mutations because if somebody knows that potassium channel is the culprit then one can particularly use a voltage gated potassium channel antagonist to bring back the activity to normal so that is how potassium uh, voltage-gated potassium channels are interesting therapeutic target. It's not only about potassium channel. The genes that encode for voltage-gated sodium channels are found to be also mutated in epilepsy. For example, SCN1A, SCN2A, 8A, all of these encode several subunits of the sodium channel, voltage-gated sodium channel, and they are found to be mutated in the epilepsy patients. Let's talk about the anti-epileptic drugs and treatment of epilepsy. So, one of the drug is velproic acid, which increases the GABA level and thereby increases the inhibitory drive in the circuit. So higher excitability can now be toned down to a desired level using this particular drug. So it can be used for generalized seizures, absent seizures and bipolar disorders, but it should not be used during pregnancy. Now there are a plethora of drugs. Many of these drugs that are prescribed for epilepsy act against the voltage gated sodium channel. Two such drugs are given here, but there are a plethora of drugs which block the sodium channel and pr prevent the symptoms of seizure. So I hope this video was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can support our channel using super thanks, which is a heart shape icon with dollar in it in the right hand side of each video. You can pay via pay pay PayPal, Paytm or UPI. See you in next video.